Welcome everybody to the show, Paranormal Roundtable. That's Paranormal Roundtable, three words, Paranormal Roundtable. I'm Josh Turner, your host, uh, a.k.a. Wolf. With me as always is my co-host. Hey, this is Sal. How's everybody doing? Sal. Definitely. Yeah. You know, Mondo Salrician. That's it, man. You finally accepting it? It's getting, getting close. It's getting uh, close. It's getting closer every como te day. Amos. Oh. Toby. Toby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, hey, everybody. Today, we talked about the last show, and we had Chief. Well, guess what? We got him back on the show again. He's got more stuff for us. He's going to round out a couple of things. He, he, you know, We spoke after the show. He's going to round out a few other last couple things about the house, and then he's going to get into other stuff that he's dealt with since he mentioned, of course, he got into the paranormal ghost hunting. He's a freelance ghost hunter and all that good stuff. So he's had a lot more stuff going on out uh, once he got away from the house. So before we jump on in there, hey, brother, um, get, let's uh, hit him with the email. Yeah, it's doswolfman88 at gmail. <laughs> My dog is... <laughs> He loves you. Hey, the dog loves you, brother. Uh, so, Das Wolfman. Keep him from licking me. Das Wolfman. Not, not you, Sal. The dog. <laughs> Get a dog on my lap here. Should awesome. Never, he, he's very needy dog. His name's Banjo, and he's, we, we saved him from a parking lot. I'll just tell the story real quick. We saved him from a parking lot. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. I don't know if I ever told you that. So, oh. but, uh, so anyways, we bring him. He, he won't go anywhere without Tony. To Tony um, Tony's dog. So Tony usually in the studio awesome. brings him because he will whine and whine when he's separated from Tony. Oh, okay. Tony's the one that actually shaved him. He found him under some crates. Plywood. Yeah. Living well, in the parking lot. Good little stuff. Guy. Cute little guy. Anyways, uh, sorry about that, folks. He was getting up in my face. <laughs> I was trying to do the show. <laughs> I was like, uh, doswolfman88 at gmail.com and wolfandsal at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Absolutely. Uh, hit us up with your stories. We've been getting inundated with stories, but we're like, we're not, it's like we're getting to them. Okay. We just have a lot of material to cover. I've been collecting stories pretty much my whole life. Like I said before, though, I, it, it, it really ramped up when I moved into this house. And like I was telling Sal, I think after having lived in that house, I began to have more paranormal experiences outside of that house. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because it, the veil maybe is yeah, lifted off your eyes or off, you know yeah, what to man. see or I don't, you know what, it, you know. You get sensitive. Yeah. I was talking to a friend the other day and, and he lives up in Longview, Texas. And he oh, was yeah. telling me that there was a house that, that he lived in that was having some activity. And, and it's a guy I knew from way back when I was a teenager. And he said that. They, he knows now, like like w- w- having lived in a house that was haunted. You know, he knows what because he, you know, yeah, he he knows the feelings. He knows yeah. how he, he 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 knows what to expect more or less. Yeah, he lived in a house when he was young. Yeah, that was haunted, and then mm-hmm. there was this long hiatus where nothing happened. He went to college, did whatever. We 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 lost touch. I used to kind of date his sister actually, but he told me that <clears throat> that he was having activity now in the house he'd moved into up there in Longview. And he said that, you know, Wolf, he goes, I know what to expect because I had it happen as a kid. He said these these uh, shadows, you know, it's, you see them and all these things that go on. Yeah. Well, we got Chief in the studio here. Chief, you want to say hello? Hey, how's it going, guys? And so we're going to we're gonna recap just yeah. briefly. We were talking about the house that I lived in. Chief lived with us at, at one time and, and the, he, his experiences and kind of confirming what we all went through with this house and the different things that, that went on in, in that house. And so having said all that, we're going to get into his last couple of incidents that he didn't get to talk about on the, on the, on the last show. I know we touched, but I didn't go into detail. Um, the two, the two incidents that I wouldn't say the deal breaker because I'm some guys, to this day, we never seen them again, you know. But <laughs> take I would off, and they don't come back. I wouldn't know? say the deal breaker, but we'll just say we'll just say Chief was tired at this point. <laughs> One scenario uh, was I want to say we got back from work. I know a lot of times we'd go out to a truck stop out in Buda. Oh yeah, after work. Yeah, we go out to Dorset. So the whole gang, man, no we longer prob- exists now. Pinballs. Yeah, pinballs. Uh, fun place. I take the kids out. I love um, We'd get a twenty topper, a thirty topper, some. T- it depended on how many people were oh, with yeah. us. Most We'd of the time, it was. Sometimes. Most of the time, it was all black shirts. It was our our whole our whole crowd from work, and I and want what to he s- means by that is the Roxy. The shirt was black. Uh. We had white shirts and we had black shirts. 
I think the white shirts were like a special event, and then the it, black shirts were the everyday shirts. Yeah, it was like a like a light gray, almost white, and then you know that was kind of like a running deal with the club. Hey, man, you're about to have twenty black shirts down here, and you don't chill, you know. But yeah. <laughs> neither here nor there. So I want to say we got out of work, went down to Dorset's, had some chicken and dumplings, you know, chicken fried steaks chicken or whatever. Steak. Came back, you know, everybody was in a. I, I would. The only way I could put it is that maybe a jovial. You know, everybody was pretty happy, uh, kind of. Uh, mood you know do you remember scorpion winning like bets with those guys out there because he would eat all that food i remember that <laughs> he would, i'm not trying to get sidetracked here folks but it was oh unreal. loki we'll too the paranormal yeah loki could eat too uh, but, but scorpion <laughs> uh, you guys heard him on episode two was it no three three so three he could literally eat like a snake. I'm not kidding. He could gorge on food like it was two chicken un- fried steaks, dude. The chi- and they had these trucker specials, uh, Armando. They were 12 ounces each. Oh, that's a big. So that was one special, and there were two of them. So you get 24 ounces. I watched this guy eat two of those specials. That's the, the breading, the breading is hanging off the plate. Oh, it was oh, crazy, man. dude. And he would eat that. The biscuits, the the. You know, the plate out. It was huh? unreal. It was unreal. I never, to this day, I've never seen anybody eat like that. It was crazy. That's Amazing. funny. We're talking about the eating because this 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 scenario occurred in the kitchen. I remember we got back and I can't remember what was said. There was always some joking around, you know. It was, I mean, besides all the paranormal stuff, we had a blast. But I remember walking in, and I remember it specifically because I remember saying something. I, we were cutting up about something and wolf said something and then uh, i don't know if it was d or or squid that it said something Is else the light fixture yes oh okay i i, to, I, I specifically remember chiming in and saying bro you're gonna piss off the poltergeist yeah. and i specifically remember wolf rebutting with i, I don't, don't care i don't yeah. give a f about no darn poster uh, or poltergeist, uh, it's something to that lines. Yeah. And then I remember as I was saying this, and as he was speaking to me, I was going to my room, and then I hear, "Ah, what the f?" Of course, there was an expletive instead of the f, yeah. but <laughs> and then it got quiet. It was another mouse fart. You could hear a mouse fart in the wall. Then everybody, I can hear the guys, hey, what happened, bro? You know, I don't want to say Marshall, you know, and some of the guys, I can, I can overhear kind of what that's being said. Well, when I walk to the kitchen, everybody's, I wouldn't say hovering over Wolf because nobody hovers over a Wolf, but, you know, Wolf hovers over everybody else because he's so tall, but everybody was around him and concerned. Clearly, the fixture wasn't, I didn't witness it. I heard it. I, I, I semi instigated it. I feel <laughs> the fixture was off the wall. Wolf's got a an abrasion on his head, from what I recollect. Yeah, big knot. And that was one of the that was one of the uh, scenarios that just had me tired, man. I don't. I wouldn't say tired because, like I said, I was desensitized to to the to the uh, wacky stuff that was already going on. But I was tired of being concerned for my friend. Or what was, or what, I, that sounds bad, but I was tired of their constant, constant concern, you know, constant, what's going on, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's what really got me into that mode was the sleep paralysis. Oh. And it wouldn't, I'd get jolted out of bed. You know, I know some of the roommates would say a shock or, or, uh, you know, I think, uh, Taz said one time that he felt like he was punched, but I definitely would get jolted out of my sleep. Um, but, uh, back to the sleep paralysis, I remember a scenario where I was in my room and I can hear some flailing, some banging going around, flailing, banging, going around, uh, didn't really raise my suspicion until I heard Wolf's voice go chief. And then I was always on the cusp because at that point, like I was saying, I was desensitized. I was tired. I was like almost that what now kind of you were you know, at the point basically where yeah, you're like, I, 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 I get so much of this I, I was I, breaking I yeah that. you know I was t- I was tired but I was also desensitized like you know like the, like the mortician per se you know that guy deals with dead people all the time it's is nothing and probably eats lunch while he's while he's doing the stuff right yeah well I remember 
having an impulse like, all right, he he's calling, something's up. I open the door, Wolf's laying on his bed, his mouth's moving, clenching his heart. My first impulse is, my guy's having a heart attack. Right. You know, or a seizure or something. His mouth's moving, his face is bright red, he's reaching his arm out. Like, uh, you remember, uh, is it Attack of the Body Snatchers? Uh, Donald Sutherland, where he's like, yeah, he's standing so. in front yeah, of the yeah. cathedral and he's like pointing, you know, and he's got like white eyes. And this, this is, well, he didn't have, Wolf didn't have white eyes, but the, the, the whole expression, that whole scene. Well, um, that's what I felt like I was looking at. I felt like my friend was having some sort of medical, possibly some sort of attack. Wow. My first impulse was, wasn't paranormal. My first impulse was my, my friend's having a seizure or something. Mm-hmm. And then when he finally, I guess, whatever was on top of him, whatever released him, because I know you hear a lot of stories about the the hag or the, the sleep per- paralysis witch kind of deal. Whatever released him from their clutches or got off of him or whatever, he finally kind of panted and, and gasped for air. Like, he, I guess he could finally breathe, you yes. know? And the first thing that came, comes out of his mouth was, I've been calling you. I, I was sitting in my room watching the ball game, and I only heard my voice one time. That's so, crazy. And that was my theory behind, and I know it's a little deep, you know, but I, I, I tend to think a lot sometimes. And my theory was this entity had me so desensitized and tired and, and it's just the routine and what next and that maybe that thing was stalling me so it could mess with him. Of course, you know, it's a theory. That's That right there sounds really uh, odd, but. As far as the situation, when you look back over all the the stuff that it did in, in and around the house, it seems like it's par for the course what it was doing. Now it, but in this instance, sounds like he, he just stepped it up to the next level, you know. So Wolf, when when this particular incident happened, give us some, give us give us your take on this. I don't remember any of that. I think he's just making up. <laughs> just kidding, folks at home. Don't don't. I'm not, I'm being serious. No, I do remember that incident. You probably uh, don't want to remember. Well, no, I do remember all of it. I mean, I, yeah, you're right. I, I would rather not have happened, but that happened a few times. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's something I was going to touch on in another episode about sleep paralysis. Awesome, yeah. And, and I wanted to talk about the hag because I would. I saw something when I was like 11. I think I said that in episode two. Or something two like or that. three. I, I can't yeah, remember off the top of my head. But, but I didn't. Th- I never saw that again, but I would feel like pressure on my chest. Yeah. I would feel like something would climb on top of me. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, and I would also feel like, um, okay, like one time I, I told you that I felt like something put a hand over my mouth. Yes. And was like, I couldn't breathe. And mm-hmm. to this day, sometimes I'll get a panic attack and I'll feel like something's trying to cover my, my mouth and nose. And so I, I felt like I couldn't breathe and I was just like getting this panic attack and, and feeling, but I'd be asleep and I'd wake up with that. That's Which I, you know, and what is that? I don't know what nuts. that is, but I just remember like the sleep paralysis. Like sometimes I would feel like something would would start touching my legs and then go up and then squat on top of me. It was pretty common. Like I didn't happen all the time, but like I know that it happened to one guy in particular who has already declined to to talk about any of the things that has. Not not like it's he's tra- traumatized completely, but he's not a good speaker, so he's already told me, "Hey, you could tell me the story." Well, I'll call him. Uh, I'll call him Danny. That's yeah. just, I don't want to say his name, but he had an incident in that room because. I was gone for about a month, right? And so he actually rented my particular room out, mm-hmm. and I actually came back after about a month, and I, I just stayed out in the living room for like another month and just let him use the room. Yeah, because he had paid me for that, you know, because he needed it, whatever. And and I had my brother in the other room or whatever, and so he claimed that he had the same experience in that room on multiple occasions, and then he just got tired of it and he left. You know, after because it was supposed to be a three month deal, it ended up being a two month deal. <laughs> but he still paid us, so I was like, okay, I don't care, you know, because I was coming and going all the time. Yeah. Now here's a story that happened to him. He claimed that something came out of the corner of the wall and just kind of like moved, almost like a person, where he could see like arms but no legs, and that it was pulling itself up up the, onto the ceiling, and then it kind of just dripped down on top of him. And I say that like dripped down, like it kind of like came down in like a black like a mist yes. and then formed all over him. 
Whoa. Yeah, and he claimed that th- there was only the light from the closet that was there. He was illuminating it enough to see this like blacker than black looking uh, shadowy thing. The black mass was that was what I felt was a different entity from the um, the frumpy toad troll deal. The frumpy toad uh, was definitely uh, associated with the mirror, but now the I feel like the black I call it the black mass. Because I felt it was a different entity. It's definitely larger. It looked different. Um, the way I describe it is, you know, you're watching National Geographic or, or whatever, o- oceanographer or whatever, and uh, there's an octopus swim through the water, and it's startled by something, and it squirts out some black ink in the water. Well, the only way I can describe this thing is that black ink floating around or just kind of shooting out into into your into the air you know or just right in right in front of you and i felt like that might that was very similar to scorpion's story with uh with the blackness that was covering his his decoration on his on his ceiling that's that's <laughs> that's a little wacky man but you know, yeah that's hey, uh, and it, it's, it sounds par for the course for the house man well it's interesting that you actually you of like one of maybe just a handful of people who've actually had these experiences at the house uh alongside me you actually define them a little better like you know like like you most of the guys don't really make a distinct a distinguishment i guess that's a, is that a word distinguishment they don't exactly distinguish between one entity and the next because I do believe there was a plethora of things going on there. I don't think it was just one thing. I do too. I do too. It yeah. sounds like it, man. I mean, it's just this, the, the you know, like he mentioned the little troll in troll entity gargoyle thing, thing, gargoyle thing, thing whatever. Gargoyle, whatever. You got that, and then you imp. got yeah, yeah, imp. Yeah, imp, we mentioned uh, that in a, in a previous I know, show, and I, I know the Mexicans call them duendes. Yeah, yeah, it's like the little trolls. Yeah, but you know that's that's just. Man, I know that freaked me out. So, great recap. I'm glad you finished up on the house, but off the air again after the last show, you talked about the other stuff you were into now away from the house and stuff. So, hey, brother. Before before we go, though, about the house, uh, just one last thing. You were talking about how you didn't really believe going into the house, and I remember that. But yeah. then a- now, after all, you, you've you actually become like sort of that's a, a sideline thing. You like to go and like look for these things. I like, uh, you know, if it's something that's from a region I'm from or I, I, last summer uh, we did the uh, Alice Alice Memorial Hospital. And I, I was born in that hospital and there's a lot of lore and tales and experiences that came out this summer. We, we decided to go visit and then... Uh, you know, rented some cold spots. You know, I, I could swear something was whispering. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm a psychic medium or something, but you know, the hair the hair stands up on the back of my neck just like everybody else's when when stuff doesn't feel right. So I, I took some interesting pictures. Uh, I, I can forward them over to you. Maybe if you want to post them on yeah, the, absolutely on you the page what was later. It, whispering to you? I, it was really Al it really wasn't Al Pasto. <laughs> No cilantro. (laughs) (laughs) I'm getting hungry now. No, man, it it really wasn't. It didn't really seem like distinct or like words, you know, it seemed like uh, a faint, you know, like a little song or a little whisper, a little, you know, like. You couldn't just distinguish like, it. Yeah, I couldn't distinguish it, but it's definitely something that, that was something at the house too. It wasn't wasn't the wind, you know. Uh, I don't know if if you're familiar with Alice, Texas. It's it's a it's a vacuum. It's like a hot being stuck in a hot vacuum. So definitely no wind there. and yeah. We we talked about that in a previous episode. Uh, yeah, the, Alice uh, having a kind of being the gateway to the south. Yeah, part the, of Texas, to the to the to the valley. Yeah, the pterodactyls, and I've actually gotten another so- story from someone who saw these pterodactyl creatures or whatever. So we actually were talking about that corridor. There. Yeah, and each there, each area of Texas has its own uh, own regional, little niche, yeah, yeah. niche right. of, of spirits and spooks right. and and. Uh, Big, big entities or, or big uh, cryptids, I should say. Cryptids, yeah, and all this, the strangeness. I mean, I've told, I, I've said it before in a previous, you know, episode that Texas is just chock full of high strangeness of whatever flavor, whatever variety you want. It's out there. Yeah, Port Aransas you know? has a has a rich history of spirits and ghost encounters. I when I came back from the vacation in August, I had friend a friend of mine had just gone back down there, and uh, he was telling me 
that they saw something really weird. They saw these these blue like lights bouncing off of each other over the water. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and he said it was weird. It was like mm. six people. They were there, and it was like in September. Yes. And that they they saw this it was right Labor Day weekend or whatever, and they saw this kind of bouncing, you know. And and I've I've actually heard a lot of people talk about the uh, that particular. Uh, these lights, you know, in that area around Port Aransas and where you used to live, Chief Corpus is Corpus full Christi. Of, yeah, There's San Antonio, uh, Corpus Christi. You go to East Texas and you got the big thicket, but Bigfoot just out the yin yang. Dog man there. too. I like dog man around here in Central Texas. Dog man, yeah. goat man, dog man, goat man. Uh, some uh, Black Panther stuff. Uh, oh, we, we were going to touch on that where you used to live. Before we do that, though, let, let's just hold that for a second. The the where where you're from, Maynard. You lived outside of Maynard. I lived out of, outside out of, of Maynard. Country, it's yeah. a it's a it's about ten or twelve miles out of town. It's a it's a little place called Wilbarger Creek. Mm-hmm. Used to be the middle of nowhere. I, I want to say my nearest neighbor was probably a mile away. Yeah, now it's a lot more people. Now there's a lot more people out there, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and I remember going out there when you when you were first hanging out at the club. And yeah. I go out there sometimes. You met mom and dad. Yeah, I met your mom and dad. Dad was a cool character. I remember your mom and dad. I've, I've know, I know your brother, your family, whatever. Uh, we know each other. You know, you met my my grandmother before she died. You, yeah, you knew my dad. Everybody. So you know my family. I love your dad, man. Yeah, you know you know all of us uh, pretty well. The the thing though is it that for my hometown is like what eighteen miles from your hometown. Right. Ta- right so off of from Maynard, you you can get to Taylor uh, right on nine seventy three. Uh, yeah, yeah little triangle minutes. right there, and there's there is a little like a little area of weirdness right there too. And uh-huh. I know that Linda Godfrey she put it in one of her books about a dogman encounter that happened right outside of Maynard, Texas. Wow! And I know that there has been a goat man, a legend of a goat man for there a long time. And I didn't tell any stories about the goat man because I didn't have any, but now I do. I actually got one, but I'm going to talk about that in another episode. Right. But we were talking about the black cats. The yeah, there's some lore, uh, some lore out there in uh, Wilburger Creek uh, about a, a black uh, cat or panther per se. Uh, there's another, some more lore about a a, a wolf type beast, but uh, that's interesting because you said that you thought maybe it was a dog man. I I I thought it was a dog man because a, a lot of people, would, uh, some of the stories that I heard was uh, kind of correlated with some of the other dog man stories about having multiple teeth you know m- almost more teeth than it should kind of deal mm-hmm. you know what i mean and then i never encountered it uh you know i mean out, out in out in the country you're gonna hear you're gonna hear a howl or two you know and it, it's kind of like kind of like i was saying with the house you you desensitize after a while you don't yeah, necessarily go chasing after everything to hear but uh the one encounter that i heard about this wolf type beast out on Wilbarger Creek was that it did it was bipedal that it stood up on two legs and that it had it, it had an enormous amount of teeth just abnormal amount of teeth just more teeth than than a being should or yeah. maybe needs <laughs> and that was the stuff that I I thought correlated with the dog man now the goat man was that's actually in the city of Maine yeah absolutely yeah I've heard that and the lore the lore and the tales, I guess, are so amplified because back in the day, the the high school and the junior high were on the same campus, and there was only two ways to get to town. You walked down Highway 20, down the <laughs> Goatman Bridge, mm-hmm. or you took your chances on Highway 290. Mm-hmm. And it was just a lot more convenient to go out the back gate, go past the bus bar, walk down Highway 20. You got the narrowest bridge ever uh i think people can uh witnesses can uh can uh, verify one day there was two two school buses on this bridge and uh the bridge was so narrow that the mirrors the mirrors collided on the two buses so that gave it a creepy uh, another creepy feel you got an old really narrow bridge you know and uh, the the lore is the tale is that there's a goat man there resides under that bridge yeah that's a, that's always since to be where they hang me and sal were talking about that episode one yeah they like to hang out and then later we we touched on it again talking about the billy goats gruff yeah and how that that the, the young lady that sent us the the about the book yeah with the, the, how the goat men were or the goats were oh, depicted as yes, having goat-like, yes. man-like qualities one thing i was going to talk about though at one point, you were staying outside of Del Valley. <clears throat> That's outside of Austin, too. And I remember you and Loki were roommates. And <laughs> it was a, 
It was a weird incident. There was like a little get together, whatever. So I went out there to you guys' place. I and, remember that. And I had this weird, like, when I got in the truck, I had this weird, really weird feeling. Like there was, it felt weird. The whole time I was headed over there, I felt like there was something in the truck with me. It's like something followed me from my house. Oh, man. And it was like a cold spot in the truck. And I kept thinking, what is that? So I get out there to their place and we're hanging out and we eat, whatever. And then I leave the, later in the, in the night. I go to leave and I felt like there was something following me. And I remember a friend of ours standing on the porch and I, he, he was like, he goes, oh, it's chilly out here. And it wasn't really chilly. It right. was just like there was like a it cold spot. It was actually spot. hot and humid. It was hot and humid. And I said, dude, there's a cold spot. And he goes, oh, I feel it. And I said, dude, that's that that, that must be the ghost. I was joking, kind of half joking, yes. not knowing what it was. And I said, that must be the ghost that's followed me from the house. I said, I turned and I said, spirit from the house, you stay in this house. And <laughs> chief came out and was like, don't be saying stuff like that. <laughs> we were joking around. And I said, no, no, it's yours now. It's bound to your house. Well, I go home a couple days later. I see him up at the club, and it was not even like a joke anymore. Like he goes, "Dude," he goes, "No bull." I mean, he goes, "Him and his roommate both were telling me that weird stuff started to happen at the house." And I said, oh, "Come on!" I thought, you know what? You guys are imagining it because I said that, but I really did feel like there was something there. And I know that that right after that, you want to tell about what happened with the with the. It just seemed like. And it was really, really unsettling to me because it was like, what's it, poltergeist? The the bodies. Oh yes, and yes, then yes. oh everything's okay, okay. And then <laughs> as soon as they get, what is it, poltergeist too? As soon as they get somewhere back to another home, everything starts back up again. Yeah, so I, I just somewhere else. Honestly, felt I probably had a nanu second. I'm ashamed. I probably had a nanu second of. Uh, of crying in the shower. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I probably had a nanosecond of going, oh, I'm about to have an absolute breakdown. What, what's happening? You know what I mean? Um, but no, man, it seemed just like I, that I didn't, there was not really entities, not that we could see, but there was definitely uh, the mischievous kind of stuff, you know, lights going off, TVs going off, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, it was a double wide mobile home, so we had the uh, the fan on yes. the over the stove you yes. know it was kind of loud you know that, that would kick on whenever you know just stuff that wasn't wiring we'll just put it that way oh man you know and i don't know i want to oh. say that uh my family uh either had the house blessed or or uh, i know it's tradition in our family to bury uh holy water at all four corners yeah and, and we didn't have we didn't really have any uh any sit any uh incidents afterwards or well, that's you know that's so what, what our occurrence the, is the doll you said there was a because you had a collection yeah yeah oh that's actually that was part of one of the main deals in that whole episode was i had a collection of of kachina dolls and these are uh, native american handcrafted uh dolls uh they can get pretty pricey um well this one was i guess my favorite one per se and this thing decided that it was gonna hop off of the bookshelf and right onto the floor and just fall to pieces you know it, it gave my heart drop like ugh, you know what i mean oh man and uh that that was a strange occurrence that happened uh after uh wolf dropped off the entity or whatever it was <laughs> I delivered it, man. I'm, hey. I'm taking you to see a friend. Just get in the car. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I d hey, I deliver the ghosts, man. You know what? And, and I'm going to say something that I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that some of the activity slowed down a little bit at my house after that. I'm not kidding. Mm. I mean, it sounds weird and kind of jokey. But, like, I told my brother, I said, hey, I think I dropped off one of the, 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 the pests at their house. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, I don't know. I mean, who knows? It just was kind of a, a jokey, funny thing. But then it, stuff started happening over there. And oh, man. Wolf, the spirit whisperer. <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah. You know, the thing that comes to mind for me is, you know, you, you said that after all this was happening, you know, the family, they came over there, you know, and had the house blessed. You know, that's stereotypical. That's that's the kind of thing that happens in my family, too. You know, very Mexican. So, yes, very, very, very. very you know, Yes. That's all part of the tradition. The, very rasa. Yes, very much so. And the blessings, all all these things, you know, you get the egg in you, you know, you 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 sweep every, you sweep the over. Them. Yeah, you do the limpia with with all that the stuff. The sage and, and the egg and, the, and and all this stuff. And of course, all that's rooted in in um 
historically it's rooted in the indigenous part of being Hispanic of Mexican heritage. And then, of course, you've got the, the Catholic stuff that is rooted, of course, Catholic Church, all the, 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 the Spanish coming and everything else. And, of course, when they moved into an area trying to convert the local populace, well, naturally you get a mix, you get a blend of the two things there you got religious people and spiritual people yeah and so you indigenous got the people you got all you know you got the yerberos the, the people who do all the the mix elixirs with the plants and all the stuff and the, the healers the shaman yeah. type so and then you know you this got is the, all part of the part and parcel of, of, of the a lot of texas you know and then of course with that comes all the mexican folklore you know mexican based and it's i mean there's tons of that stuff here. Oh, you yeah. Know? We were talking about Texas having its, uh, you know, little hotbeds here. You know, I got and what I mostly do, you know, since I used to live in these regions, I got family down there. I got friends down there. Uh, uh, Rio Grande Valley. Shout out to the Blood Pack. Uh, my boy, Frankie Trevino. Are these gang and, members? Good? No, not at all. Not, <laughs> not at all. Not. No, no negative. Ne- ne- negative. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, we sharks. got. Stuff from the Rio Grande Valley, you know, stuff from the Coastal Band. Uh, I, I personally, from uh, the Coastal Band, I'd say about Alice, Corpus Christi, all the way down to Donna, Brownsville, La Feria, Mission, the whole Rio Grande Valley. That's a massive hotbed of a lot of, like you say, and there's a lot of the, the lore and the, and the, the Mexican uh, descended kind of do. Why did you do that? South Padre Island. South Padre Island also. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's uh, messing with it. Uh, actually, I got a good uh, sighting out out by South Padre, um, but yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that lore, a lot of the brujeria and the and the, the ojo, the ojo, the llorona, the lechuza. I, I, I've never seen like an egg cure so many things though. I, I, I swear that egg will cure the ojo. It'll cure whatever. Yeah, the the egg, hey, Vicks, bro. Vicks vapor. <laughs> Vicks, <laughs> Vicks. Hey, they, the Mexicans say vaporu. <laughs> okay. Vicks what on was anything, baby. Music, they call it the Nintendo. Nintendo. Oh, the, <laughs> the it Nintendo. was a uh, uh, it was a running joke, you know. Like, like I want, I wanted a Nintendo, and my mom was like, "Pues no entiendo, mijo. I, mean, I don't understand what you're telling me." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way she, the way you said, it was so funny. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah man. But it's, the, it's interesting, you know. You you can bring up so much from from the real Grand Valley. Oh, so yeah. much stuff that happens down there. You know, what what are some of your things that you've you've uh you know encountered and what, come what I like to there? do with the with some of the lore or the stories is once I've heard it a, a, once or more times, I'll I'll call my I'll, I'll call or I'll contact uh, one of my contacts in, in the area and uh, and and if it checks out I'll I'll uh, investigate it a little more from what I can, you know. Um I got a black dog. Yeah, the uh, Cadejo. The Cadejo, yeah. Uh, is a sighting uh, eyewitness. Uh, we'll say his name is Juan. The name Juan, not number one. <laughs> uh, he's out of, I want to say La Feria, and that's down by uh, Brownsville. Uh, it's in that vicinity. Uh, I call the it Valley. Yeah, the valley the down there. Southernmost tip of the valley. Rio probably. Grande Valley. Uh, and Matamoros is right across. Right there. across that's the way. A lot of the the magic. Um, I know that that there was a guy that got Eric Kilgore, I believe, his name. He died. They 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 murdered him from the 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 they did the bruja like a, a the, cult. The bruja, yeah. He was a brujo. Yeah. yeah, he was a, he was a guy, and and it was a, he he ran a little cult. Yeah, and they I murdered remember. this guy uh, back in the eighties, I believe it was like spring break or something. Yeah, like that. he was a college kid. College kid, and it was it was national news. I mean, it made national headlines, yeah, and they did. literally got the like the president of Mexico involved or something. It was crazy because of all that magic, the stuff that was going on. But you were talking about the Cadejo. That's a very popular legend where we're from too, right? Between mm-hmm. Taylor and 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 uh, Elgin right. and and Maynard, uh, floating demon dog. Yeah, there's a allegedly. dog that, that sometimes people see it as like having no legs and eyes. Um, I got a story for somebody that lives in between Taylor and and uh, Maynard for that too. But Copeland. Uh, no, it was it was closer to New Sweden. Where okay, they, where they actually saw one. That kind of leapt out in front of their vehicle, and then it just kind of, whew, it was gone, but it had red eyes. Yeah, yeah the the, the uh, eyewitness Juan was saying uh, back in 2015, him and his dad arrived at Boca Chica Beach, which is part of the, uh, I think it's the International sea- Seashore, 
And Boca Beach faces the bay facing towards South Padre Island. There you go, Wolf. <laughs> and for those who don't know, it's a very secluded beach. Uh, lots of wildlife, rough terrain. Uh, you got the beach and then you got a wall of dunes. Well, right on the beach, while Juan and his dad were searching for a good spot to fish uh, near the, ch the ship channel, they turned left at the jetties and hit a trail. So allegedly, as someone, uh, or allegedly, as they follow the trail, uh, Juan sees something or someone perched atop of, of a hill or, or a dune, sand dune. He says, uh, as they got closer, it appeared to be a dog or wolf, wolf type creature, similar to a German shepherd, but jet black. And five times larger than any dog, coyote, or wolf. Now, to me, this is real odd. And, you know, uh, I think Wolf and Sal uh, can uh, verify or, or, or back me up on this. There's rare or maybe none, slim to chance, there's wolves in South Texas. Now, there's plenty red, of coyotes. Red wolves. There are red, red wolves. Are, Sal talks about that. Some red wolves. But I, the, the smaller stature, right? Oh, yeah, Red wolves, absolutely. yeah, not like a timber wolf. Well, they or have a, coyote blood, so I mean, yeah, okay. they're gonna be smaller. That makes sense. And, and coyotes don't get very big. No, and, and we, we're, we're we gonna go some back. Big ones in Texas, but they're they're bigger than normal coyotes, but they're not uh, giants. Um, he said this canine esque animal was massive. He said it was massive while it was sitting down. And okay. it, was, it, it, was, it wasn't floating. It was just sitting. It wasn't floating. Uh, uh, wasn't floating. He did say uh, red, red eyes. Uh, wasn't floating. Didn't didn't. At the same time, there there wasn't uh, uh, an excessive amount of teeth. You know, I believe it was just a, a normal looking dog, but just massive red eyes. Says that uh, it just sat there. The massive canine s dog sat there calmly on the hill facing the bay. Now, Juan says the beast stands up, and which I don't think that correlates at all with the Cadejo, because I've heard that it, I've heard stories and lore that the Cadejo is either on all four or mm -hmm. or actually floating. Uh, it's some kind of a fantasma, like yeah, like a maybe ghost, a, sh like entity, a, yeah. a shapeshifter. There's one that I don't even speak of, because uh, according to Mexican and Native American folklore. You speak it, you bring it. You bring it. Yes, that's a very common. So, um, you probably guys probably know well, the, the beast I'm talking so about. I'm yeah, regardless, I'm gonna. Something's gonna. Uh, you know. And he says, you know, "Let's say it has no. I don't feel it correlates with the the, the Cadejo, but we got some weird stuff we're talking about here." He says that he has no idea what it was, but he felt it was definitely a predator, and that uh, the thing just. As they as they kept pondering away, the thing turned around. Pondering at it, the thing turned around and disappeared into the dunes. And Juan left off with this: Be cautious when at Boca Chica Beach, especially at night. This thing that he saw, did it? Was it on two legs? When he saw it, he said that it was sitting calmly on the dune. Stood up like a man, oh, turned around, right. yeah. and walked off. So werewolf, dogman type entity. Cadejo dogman. Let me ask you a question. Cadejo guy. What kind of car do you drive? <laughs> I think he drove a Chrysler. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, seriously though, folks. This, this, what you're talking about, what he's talking about here, the Cadejo, uh, these legends or whatever. Matia used to tell us stories of these, the, the dogs, the Hidalgo. And uh, Anthony, you're from Taylor. You you know about the dogs. They were black dogs. There's a story I told in Vic's show. If you guys go back in the archives, I think it's on 59, 58, 59 on Dogman Encounters. Yes, I believe one of those two episodes. And there was a legend of these mariachis, and one of them had actually sold his soul to the devil. Yes. And that what happened was because he wanted a girl. Well, the devil always takes his pound of flesh. And yes. so what ended up happening was, the, the girl rejected him eventually, he, and then and then like he got her, but it was only brief. And then the girl rejected him, and then he ended up. The devil came and collected his due, and him and his little homies 
became these devil dogs. And I actually had two guys that I played Little League Baseball with when I was growing up there. They actually said that they, were, they heard peop, something span, speaking Spanish in the weeds near the railroad tracks. Hmm. And then the interchange of railroad tracks are where people see a lot of stuff, and this is when all the cotton would come and go mm-hmm. through. The, yeah. Taylor produced a lot of cotton. The gin, area. yeah, the big old gin big there. Old gin, you know. And so you had these, like, patches of where the cotton, you know, in different places, you know. And there was all these weeds growing up right there because anything grows at Blackland. It's real fertile, you know. And so right there near that, the railroad tracks, the brush, they, they heard these, like, Spanish, and then they see these three big dogs jump out on the road in front of them. And they they reported that they looked solid black with red eyes and that they were talking in Spanish to each other. And then they one of them noticed the kids and kind of turned upward and, and morphed into this uh, upright canine looking creature that almost resembled Anubis. And huh. then it just kind of walked across the road staring at them. And, and they said that they could see a smirk on their faces like they were smiling. Like they knew they were intimidating the the heck out of these kids, and then of course my my friend's just little brother real broke nonchalant crying. cock of the walk, yeah, trying to of... just be like, look at what we can do, you know. Right. And it was terrifying to them, but they didn't hurt them. The kids just sat there, you know, freaking out, screaming, and and uh, they felt like they were te- it was sheer terror, you know, in their hearts. And then they they you know they they got home, and of course they they told the parents didn't believe them. And uh, <laughs> so I, I grew up with these kind of legends, and I know that the. Uh, there's a lot of these black dog legends. I have a black dog story that I that I told on Vic's show too. But it was actually a good thing. It, they they think that it may have saved him from this other wolf like creature. But I have a black dog story that came out of Devil's Backbone that we never got to. Ooh. And it was near the uh, cemetery. Now, if you go back to the, the Devil's Backbone episodes that we did, I don't remember what they what numbers they were. I'd have to go back and look. I'm just done a lot of shows, but I know that. That cemetery, we took photos of it. Someone claimed to have seen a black dog with red eyes sitting up on that little hill by that cemetery from the from Purgatory Road, and they claimed that when when their when their vehicle drove by, that it stretched out and stood up with this sort of greenish glow around it, yeah. and that it had the red eyes, and that its face was it was really long, like elongated, and it yes. had really tall ears. That's really weird to me because like some of the it's kind of Anubis esque. Yeah, kind and, of, and when we get into the werewolf sto- stuff later on in a later episode, we, 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 we've we already talked about it. There's some stories that we got where these people will see like this greenish like mist or something around these creatures. I don't know what that is. I've, I've heard it over and over again. It's like it's like some sort of weird thing. And along that same thread, I'll tell you another story. Uh, Chief, I know you probably haven't heard this one, but you, you other guys might have. There was a, a lady that was going out to her, her take out her trash in that same corridor between Taylor and Maine where we're from. Okay. Because, uh, you know, our teams even played football against each other in high school. So um, th- we're from that same area, you know. Yes. Th- th- this lady was taking out the trash near Rice's Crossing. Okay. Not in Rice's Crossing, but she lived close to it. Okay. And so she said that she was taking out the trash and she heard growling. And her, she knew it wasn't her dog. She had a little dog that she could hear barking from the house. She had a double-wide trailer. trailer yes. Dog. And she, she kind of had to walk to the road with the trash cans or whatever for the trash day. And right there in this culvert, this thing jumps out onto the road in front of her. And she said that it looked like the biggest Rottweiler she'd ever seen in her life, probably twice the size of a normal Rottweiler. And she said that it went, that, that its paws, like when it touched the ground, she could see kind of like a red light come off of its paws. And that it had these red glowing eyes. And she said that she, she could see them, like from, from she was like walking toward it, she could see nothing but darkness at first. Like she just saw something like a dark shape. Yes. And then she saw the eyes like blinking. Like she could see like what looked like, you know, like somebody's brake lights almost like blinking. And she was like, what is that? And then she got closer. That's when she knew it was a dog, you know. So yeah, I heard a similar story of the, with the, and they use the same analogy, the brake lights, but the, the witness said that they were too close to each other. Yeah. So the, that, that, that at first he thought a bike, yeah. maybe a motorbike, how they got the lights. No, the, not only were they too close to each other, the, the light itself, or the eye it's rather, too was too big. Too big, yeah. When I when I was driving out there near Devil's Backbone one day, I was with Scorpion, and we had gone out there to a, to a friend of ours because his old boss used to live out there, and I didn't actually see this, but and, and we we've only talked to Scorpions, you know, about the house stuff that happened. Yes. But he did actually see something when we were out there one day, and he said it was large and black, and it was down in a ditch. And as we drove past it, I saw something move in the peripheral of my eye, vision, whatever. 
but he claimed that something really large and black was laying down and he could see red dots that were like the eyes. And he said that he saw this thing move and then go toward the brush as we passed it. Now, here's the other thing. I did hear something like a crash because we weren't going that fast. It was a windy road that we were on. Yeah, can't and go I, too fast on those No, roads. it was a county. No, it was a backward, back road, county yeah. road. And we had just come off of a really treacherous uh, county road that was full of rocks. It was gravel, you know? Yeah. So we got onto the, to a paved road, which wasn't much better. And he saw that and he was like, what the heck? And so he rolled his window up. And then I didn't even want to entertain it because I was already feeling kind of creeped out and weird out there anyway at the backbone. It's always weird. And so, anyways, like he he reported, like he told me that he saw something large and black move off into the brush. Like I said, I was driving, I didn't get a good look, or so I don't I don't ever say I saw something unless I can absolutely say I know what it was. You know what I mean? I suspect that it might have been something, but I can't say what, and he can't either because it just looked like a black mass, or at least a, a, a decent description. You know, something. Yeah. Was- well, the Cadejo Act sounds like a very po- plausible uh, theory. I mean, these black dogs, people see them, and it, and it seems to be uh, they appear in the same vicinity as uh, Sasquatch and Dogman, right. you know, werewolves, places that are haunted or cursed. I think these entities are attracted to whatever there is, that is there. There could be some negative energy I, there. Negative a lot energy. Of it, you know? I wonder if there's a correlation, because you know that if you took... Uh, a pencil to a map and you went from will barger creek which is in between elgin and bastrop uh through copeland over to taylor and then take another line from taylor back to Maynard. that's a massive triangle it is i wonder if maybe this notice that i wonder if maybe this um uh wolf panther uh, Will Barger thing and this Cadejo, uh, maybe, maybe the same part of a larger same something or another. You know, maybe the same pack, maybe the same entity, maybe you know. What about the Sal? We talked about this. Now you, you, you guys bought some. You were talking about Bastrop, that area. Yeah, yeah. The, we the, own some property out in that that's area. Property out there. Okay. And there's been a lot of stories. A guy I went to high school with it. He claimed he lives out there, and he claimed that you know that there was a Bigfoot habitation out there. And, of course, the big fire that happened a few years back. Wait, I don't know what year that was. Uh, I think that was 15. 15. Was it around 15? I think that was the second one, maybe, because I know there's been 13? two. There's well, been the, two fires. One was really devastating. Yeah, it I destroyed think that was like a, thir- a third of all the, you know. 2013, Because you drive believe, through probably. there now on, 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 on that road. You know, I think it's I-10 or what yes. is it, uh, 71 or whatever. 71. Yeah, down through Bastrop. And when you yes. get past that, it used to be a beautiful, lush drive with pine trees on either side. Now it's kind of, you just see the devastation. Yeah, but that's, I know uh, that the the Bigfoot area. He and he, you know, his wife always claimed that there were Bigfoot out there. But she she said that I talked to her the last time. She said that they left after the fire. That there's another Bigfoot aren't out there anymore. But there was a lot of stories of the Bigfoot out there, and they had like an apple tree or something that they grew in the, in their property, mm-hmm. and that they would see these what looked like juveniles like out there picking apples. I mean, she always claimed that that you know, and he always just was like kind of he- hesitant to admit it. But I think it was true. Yeah. Well, interestingly, you should mention that this lady out there in the Bass Stop area was reporting, you know, this these juvenile Bigfoot on the um, North American Wood Ape Conservancy Conservancy. What is it called? North American Wood, Wood Ape. Ape Conservancy. <laughs> okay. okay. I think I've ever heard and of that. Those guys, if you go, you know, just, just, uh, you can go on the computer and put in the acronym N A W A C. They got a lot of reports of all the stuff that's happened in Texas. They got lots of reports. Austin uh, Bergstrom Air Force Base, it yeah, used to be, that's right. that used to be, you know, now it's defunct. It's turned into Austin, uh, Austin Bergstrom Airport, right? Mm-hmm. That's an old air base that was out there. Well, mm-hmm. on that website, they have several reports that when the base was active, that they would report Bigfoot going out to the trash area and digging through the trash. And when you think about where that air base is, is was at is was coming in from Bastrop. Yeah, it's right out there in that Bastrop, and of course Bastrop, That's Del Valley, where the yeah, yeah. Was, where you used to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's right all around that area. So for them to to make their way down to Bastrop near Lake Bastrop, I don't think you know when you think water about source. It, yeah, it's a big it's water source. A water it wouldn't source. be it wouldn't be much of a stretch for them to make it out that way. And of course, you know Bastrop is pine. There's pine woods out there. People probably wonder how do you get 
a cluster of, of, of pine woods out in the middle of Texas. Well, it's called the Lost Pines. You can look it up. Uh, scientists have explained yeah, how it ended up that they're way. They're not but as prevalent now. Though. No, no, they're not. That fire really did a number on it. Sure, uh, yeah. it I believe it was in 2013 was the big one because then they had one. Yeah, I want to say 11. Somewhere around there. Because 14. I, I want to say 11 because uh, my granddad passed away and the actual day that I was coming home from the services there was smoke all the way to corpus christi oh i believe it so yeah, it was pretty bad and it, it, was and it burned huge. for a long time and i know like you said there were a couple that were a couple years apart a few years apart mm -hmm. and what if 2011 i believe you're right yeah and so I, I, what there was there was another one though that happened like a little bit after that yes, and it, and it yes. did some damage too but because it, mm -hmm. it i don't know who the heck did this i mean you know they say that a lot of people were saying that it was man-made you know that somebody did it you know but if, whoever they are you know shame on you because you you know, the Bigfoot are going to, they're going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that took a dark turn. I'm yeah. Going, going, you know, staying on that thread, you know, these, there's a lot of stuff just in and around this area. And, and when you think about cryptids such as Bigfoot, Dogman, for them to cover 50, 60 miles, you know, that's nothing. You know, that's nothing. And going back, you know, I, I still keep wondering about the, 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 um, Cadejo that, you know, Chief told us about down there on the beach. So I just had a question. Did the guy, the guy Juan, he didn't try to go check and see where it went after it got off the sand dunes or anything, did it? I, I, I got the sense that him and his old man were pretty, pretty freaked out. I would be freaked out. I don't blame those dudes, man. That's, that's some crazy stuff in the middle of a beach and you, you see this massive thing. <laughs> well, the, no thanks. Uh, yeah, I would too. And I think the crazier part was th this. The story was in broad daylight. You know, this yeah. happened during the day. I thought it was at night. No, this is during the day. Well, you know, oddly enough, you you know, you mentioned that because you know Vic on on Dogman Encounters, and I've heard Vic say it on numerous shows when he's talking with guests. He says that hey, um, a lot of sightings happen during the day. A lot more than what people yeah. think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. and there's not at night. So so that part of it I don't find strange. I, I, you know, judging by all the stuff that Vic's put out. That encounter, though, sounds like it was a one in a million encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Speaking of Wait, which, hey, Juan, if you're listening, bud, we're, we're just playing. We're just poking at it. <laughs> one in a million is actually a very good place to eat tacos. If you're ever in Austin, they have this humongous taco, and they have a deal where if you eat so many, you get put on a wall or something like that. I want to say Loki is number four. But with, oh God! With, Scorpion back in the day though would have would have ruled that, but now he he's getting older. He can't uh, do it. Like, well, I, I think Loki, Loki was number food, one though. for like three weeks, or I don't know, and then he went God, to number he, two. He, he did that the, the challenge that that taco challenge? Yeah, he went from number two back to number one, and then twenty minutes later he barfed it back up. <laughs> so for twenty minutes he he had the title. That sounds almost scarier than the Cadejo. <laughs> Binge and purge. <laughs> I tell you what, no, this, this all seriousness, this this uh, creature that they saw, very similar, like I said, the woman that saw at the end of the driveway. Yes. And that that ended up with her just turning around and running back into the house, and she thought that this thing had chased her. But when it moved, she said she could only see the eyes, but everything else looked fluid. Mm, okay. This is so maybe you know, like some translucent I, kind of. I don't, you know, I don't know. She said it was solid black, but it looked almost fluid. And like I said, this is a person that I got in touch with through a friend. That, this was the New Sweden incident. Uh, no, this one was near um, Rice's Crossing. Okay, out near okay. Rice's Crossing. Okay, wow. I, I am I am right area, around the corner of that. Even people that. that move out here that are familiar with this area don't even know where New Sweden or Ni Rice is Crossing is. Right. Folks, if you blink, you miss it. Right. You drive through. There's a lot. There's a there's a bar, I think, and then there's like a uh, more or less just a just an intersection, and that's it. And you well, there's gone. a bar out there, I believe. Yeah. Well, I know on the mainer end, since we've got an influx of people moving in, uh, they're uh, right on 973. We've got a, a new gas station, part of uh, of of Shadow Glen uh, subdivision. There's some brand new apartments coming in, right. so it's getting habitated on our end. But from Mainer to to Taylor, you got uh, don't blink. You know that's out there. New Sweden Rice is crossing. Yeah, those little bitty spots on the road or whatever i'm That's, gonna have to head out there man i'm right around the corner i'm well, at 973 and 290 you know maybe we'll get some uh, some investigation well, going i'll tell on. you what this is uh you know since there's more development going on and more you know like those apartments and so on that's potential for a lot more people seeing some of the seeing, strangeness right, yeah right 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 what so. about copeland because like 
me and my wife went out. My buddy of mine lives out on the other side of Copeland going north. I think it's – or I'm sorry, southeast of yeah. Copeland. And, and right right beyond that. Like if you keep going, you'll hit Elgin. Or yes. Like, the, like in between Elgin and whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And so went out there one night because we got reports of like them hearing dog man howling. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, my friend, he didn't know, really know what dog man was. He just saw this wolf-like creature on two legs. Told me about it. Went out there and was, and I listened to it, and I and I hit Vic up, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Dude, this is creepy, dude." You know, and, and I was telling him, and I was like, "You know, you can hear it." Wow. You couldn't really record it because you, it was, but there was this large dog, and uh, my wife, I think she told you this story, Armando. It, it was like a large dog that she got out to uh, smoke a cigarette or yeah. whatever, or vape, whatever it is, because I don't like it. Gives me a headache. Mm-hmm. So she get out. She gets. She gets out to do the vape, whatever, and this thing came running toward her. Freaked me out. I jumped out, and it was just a dog, like a big lab or something. Oh, wow. And I was like, honey, get in the truck. You know, when she starts to get back in the truck, and we hear that, 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 I think I can't even want to attempt to do it because I just sound stupid. But it, it was like uh, a weird howling, whatever, coming out of that bottom out there. And as soon as that, as that, we heard that that dog that was that was acting kind of aggressive. Yes. It turned around and ran and laid down in front of a, a, a the door of a house that was right there close by. Changed his mind real quick. Yeah, did it, it scared the heck out of him, but it freaked us out too. And we sat there and we listened to it for a good you know few minutes, just just like it was crazy, dude. I mean, it was just I don't know what it was. And of course, the same guy that's that lives in that area, he he's friends with my cousin too, and he said that he had heard. Not only the howling, but like a like a like a like what he thought was a, a panther or a cougar out there, and that he thought that he heard them going back and forth. And of course, that's the same area huh. where people were reporting like seeing these amorphous cat type people. Those cat type. Wow, people, that's yeah. that's you know, uh, the same corridor had, with the Wilbarger panther I think deal. It has you to know, do something to do with this area, you know. And of course, that black land is so, you know, fertile. You think, it's so. It's weird. all crops for, on twenty nine from Elgin all the way. Uh, Heck, to Taylor, uh, even past Taylor to to parts of Georgetown, it's 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 all farmland, you know. Mm, it used to be. It's, I'm pretty sure some of it's. There's I know. Still I know a lot it's of developing. But there's still but, a lot of woods too around there. It's not. It's like somebody was talking about Lubbock. How you know in our ash we did it's his a giant grid course, chief. You know our ash. Yes. And he he had a my other boxing coach dog man back in the day. Yeah, he was a great boxer. But our ash fought like uh, Ken Norton. That's what he looked like. Um, anyways getting off subject of boxing and all that. When he had his encounter in Lubbock, now this guy got on there and was like, there ain't no woods in Lubbock. Well, I'm sure there's some trees around a cemetery. That, you there's know, he, there's a wooded areas around there's every... wooded areas around everywhere in Texas. Know. He probably thought it looked like woods to him. I don't know. He was a little That's kid the stigma it, about uh, Lubbock it, being a grid. You know, well, the, inside happened, of town, it's just a grid. Well, when it happened, there were trees around the cemetery. Yes. He was a little kid. Mm-hmm. So he just said there was like some woods right there, you know. Yeah, it wasn't like he was walking through some long, creepy corridor of a forest in the Wizard of Oz. Well, normally, <laughs> well, normally when you think about uh, cemeteries, even out in in a lot of places such as Lubbock, if they're able to grow trees around there, they do it. You know, people set it up that way. They don't just leave it flat like Boot Hill. You know, mm-hmm. in the old you know tombstone days where. There's nothing out there. If they're able to plant trees and to then, create a tree line, yeah, you know? and, and put or just trees for shade for right. people that go visit loved ones that's passed on. So I, I wouldn't doubt the kid. I mean, I wouldn't doubt the kid about the trees. I mean, how thick. Well, you or know, RS too. You actually know. I mean, he's not a liar. I mean, no. we, you've met him several times, and mm-hmm. Chief, we've we've been free hanging out. No, we got not him for years. years. And, and he was man's nice never lied to me one time to give me that story, you know, and I, I, we got pretty aggravated when this guy started trying to say that, you know, well, you lost credibility because you're talking about woods, you know. Oh, so, well, it, I, if, I, I don't care about the, you know, if the guy says it, it, it was like woods, and I repeat that that's what it was like woods, you know what yeah, I mean? We're just relaying the, the story, line, guys. Though, is this area around Taylor, though, th- th- there's a lot of farmland there, but there's a lot, there's a lot of wooded area too. Like there's oh, lots yeah. of farm, and then there's woods, and there's plots of farm, and then there's woods. That's what it is. So I just I just wanted to clarify that. Right. You no, there's definitely wood, wooded area. Like, well, where do these creatures hide? Right. You know, they, dude, there's all kinds of places for them to hide. There's creeks, there's streams, and there's woods all the way around there. If you drive from Maynard to Taylor, there is farmland, but there's also a lot of woods. There's a lot of wood, wooded crossing. area. Wooded. Crossing is there's forests. When you go past, 
when you're going up in their huddo at Rice Cross and you're going across, okay, you hit a stretch where there's like it's a lot of woods that the, the trees are hanging over the, the road. Yeah, and you, you, it gets kind of dark right there. I mean, it's like I'm not saying the whole thing is like that, but there's places for these creatures to be. Oh yeah. You oh, know, there's a guy's horse right out there got attacked. You know, I remember several years ago this guy was talking about a, a neighbor of his horse got tore up real bad by something out there. Something large enough to attack a horse, you know? And I still hold to this belief, and a lot of people don't agree with it. And if you don't, you don't believe it. I don't care. But I, I think that there's something supernatural to these creatures. I do believe that they are flesh and blood, but I don't think that they stay in our realm, I guess, if you say. If you had to tell me and you pinned me down, you said, Wolf, what do you think this is? And like I said, and I'm, I'm about to actually be doing a show tomorrow on, on somebody's show, and I'm going to talk about this. Yeah, th- I think that these things are interdimensional. I think they can move between the worlds. I think there's some supernatural element there. I don't think they're just flesh and blood creatures. I do believe that there is some sort of they're they're a physical creature. But I think that some of these, if not all of these, can do something different than the normal ab- you know wolf or human being. You know what I mean? I just don't think it's a normal thing to have a wolf man running around. But I do believe that they run around because I've heard it so many times. I've done so much dog man research. And 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 then of course research just in the paranormal just to know that nothing is is like you think it is fluid nothing is is straight you know well the, it's a lot of the <laughs> things you think about they don't adhere to the mm-hmm. standard laws of physics and all the stuff that 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 we who live in this dimension or this this plane of existence it, it's just too it's too uh, iffy. To say it is exactly like this, I think it's just way too iffy Mm -hmm. because of the unexplained aspects. And and like Juan, the gentleman on the beach with his father, they see this thing and then how did it get there without them noticing or, or, you know, anything else? So we we mentioned this on first show that there's going to be some things that are going to be unexplained and that's part and parcel of what comes with the realm of the paranormal i think that's part of the intrigue is you know the unknown definitely yeah because if we all if we knew it all yeah, we'd, we'd be talking you know, about be something a researcher else researcher about a living creature you just be like well i'm researching the you know the the, the sea turtle or whatever you know i'm researching the the we'd, know, all, we'd all be authorities horseshoe crab i'm researching these creatures we know what they are you can go and find them and then Whatever, but these are cryptids. Somebody would be living with Sasquatch right now. You yeah. Know? You know? I mean, yeah. And uh, and here's here's an interesting tidbit. Cryptids, the word, you know, crypt in its origin means hidden. So cryptid animals, cryptids, if you will, means they're hidden. It doesn't mean they're magical. No, they're not saying they're dead. So, you know, with that word, that l- they're just lost, to think about. you know, lost. lost to us or people, a lot of people say shadow government knows about these and so on and so forth. And, you know, we could go on and do a whole show about shadow government and get in there because yeah. then you'll be, you know, there's not, I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. I, I will say this. What do you personally believe chief about and, and you or Mondo too, but I'll chief go first. So we don't talk over each other. We've yes. been getting complaints about talking over each other. I feel that uh, there is, you know, I, I, I kind of, I kind of agree with you on the uh, interdimensional deal, uh, but at the same token, I think part of me, I think part of me is, is, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, part of me is in love with uh, maybe it's a, it's a prehistoric animal, maybe it is a cryptid that, maybe its own uh, self preservation is what's causing it to be so elusive, perhaps. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm talking more dog, man, because, of course, Cadejo floating in red eyes, that's that's a lot more... <laughs> There's nothing uh, to that. Yeah, that's, that's spiritual, a, you know? Yeah, that's a lot more, you know, that's definitely a spirit or demon or per, whatever, per <laughs> se. Yeah, you know, but I, I'm, I think I'm in love with the fact that there's probably a giant wolf out there that is maybe a prehistoric animal that's been taking it, that's been hiding in hiding and, and, and preserving itself since back in the gap. That's you know? right. And sorry about that. But the only thing, and, and one of the things that kind of uh, leads me in that direction is kind of the whole, I know you, I've, I've heard you on some of Vic's uh, uh, podcast say that on some of the encounters where someone was armed and aiming a, a weapon at this animal that the dog man is very nonchalant, very, uh, you know, shaking his head or, or his finger at, at, at the person and, and mm-hmm. very, very nonchalant attitude like, hey, this isn't what you want. This will go very bad for you. So I'm giving you an opportunity 
to chill. Yeah, witnesses have yeah. said, and they've told me and Armando that, that that's so, something that happens. Now we're talking dog man. I feel, you know, prehistoric cryptid. Uh, we're talking Cadejo. I'm thinking demonic uh, spiritual. spirit. Yeah, spiritual. Well, to put it simply, for from my point of view, you've got the dog man. You've got Sasquatch. And you are an example there, Wolf, that, you know, you saw one, flesh and blood. Yeah. And now the dimensional, the interdimensional aspect, I leave that open. I don't say yes and I don't say no. I leave it open because the one true fact is that we don't know. Right. So I leave that open. Could they possibly have the ability? Quite possibly, yes. And now as far as, you know, the the spiritual aspect of it, I, I leave it in simplistic terms. As Christians, we believe in the Holy Spirit, i.e. that's a good spirit. Logic dictates if there is a good spirit, then there must be a bad spirit. So are there bad spirits like the Cadejo, a bad spirit that takes the shape of a, of a black wolf with with red eyes and, you know, a lot of times people see him floating and report things like that? Yeah. Because logic dictates if you have a good spirit, i.e. the Holy Spirit, right? there's the can't, bad spirit. Can't, can't have darkness without light. Exactly. So what are your thoughts about the dog man? The dog man, again, the dog man, just like Bigfoot. And we've discussed the whole deal with the Cynocephali. Yeah. Being in history, you know, it, it's been written about since the Greeks or probably before that. Oh, yeah, before that. So if they had a civilization, it's really simple. We've seen civilizations rise and fall in our history. Right. Right. And it's easier to decline. That's what it appears to me. Mm-hmm. I'm of the position that it's easier for a civilization or a people to decline than it is to advance and become an advanced Prosper. civilization. Yeah. So, Cynocephali, if they were smart enough to have a civilization, a lot of what we see now are probably remnants, the, the, the ones that's gone feral. That's the way I look at it. Okay. And, and that's why they're out there and they're flesh and blood beings. You know, and of course. So maybe like a dystopian, uh, maybe like a, a, a in, in hiding, you know, like well, you said, no, the no, preservation hide, kind yeah, of deal? Yeah, hiding, hiding is part of what they do now because I'm fairly certain, I'm of the position, I'm fairly certain they know that if their presence is known to the general public, it's going to go bad for them. Right. You know, you could have people hunting them all over the place. What are we to make of these reports that I particularly have gotten of several, I mean, of transformation stories? Now, that to me falls into the paranormal with, the, with, with that side of it. I think that the whole thing with transformations, again, we mentioned it in a previous episode. Uh, BDRP, DDoS. Yeah, and, and, we, and we've company. actually already done, we're going to do, that's going to another episode that's going to come out. Reptilians is coming up. We got Ouija boards, werewolves. We've already gotten those done. I mean, where they're coming out. Yes. This was, you know, what do you think, Chief, about that with the, where, the, the two, two things we got going on, gentlemen. Um, real quick, I just wanted to ask you what your thoughts, what I just asked Armando, and I, I looked right at Armando when I said that, but mm-hmm. I want to ask you. But then I wanted to, to we got we got to wrap this up. But I want to tell a story real quick before we go. And uh, but then you tell me what you think about the uh, transformation stories. The, I, as far as the transformation, uh, I think shapeshifters. I think that's more paranormal. You know, maybe more spiritual, maybe more demonic kind of deal. Whereas if, like I said, with the with the dogman or with Sasquatch, I I feel it's a it's a, a evolution or like a, a, a you know kind of preserve my preserve my clan, preserve my kind kind of deal. You know, stay in hiding and remain anonymous. You know, remain safe. On, on the BDRP, I'm not, and I I don't want to get off track here, right. gentlemen, because the story we're, we're kind of sticking with the. There was a there was a guy that was working at the club, and Chief knows what I'm talking about. And a, and a lot of the bouncers had claimed that his eyes would had shifted, like flickered, and turned sort of rep, you know like reptilian whatever, kind reptilian. of deal. Yeah. And I talked about it in the BDRP interview. Now you probably haven't heard it yet. You said you hadn't listened to it. I didn't get to listen to all of it. No, but did you did you remember that incident with the with? The, I I remember I remember exactly who you're talking about, and I remember yeah. that incident. I remember even you know coworkers that were just like. Heck, I felt like, and this was kind of still around the time that I was still the skeptic, you know what I mean? And I just felt like whatever they saw, 
they're really trying hard to convince me that it legit happened. Yeah. And then probably the next day or so, I was like, I was convinced. I was like, something happened because these people wouldn't be pressing so hard on, you know, or still talking about it. Yeah. Something was odd there. And my brother swears up and down that he saw it. And, of course, Scorpion and, and a few of the other guys. But that that whole incident, like, and we, and we cover that, too, in an episode that was coming up. We're going to cover that. But that you know, like I said, shape shifting, I believe, is is I just don't think everything's cut and dry. We don't know the science behind all these things. And they say, Well, it takes as much energy to do this and do that. Well, not if the science isn't really the way we think it is. You know, and who's to say what's real and what's not? I mean, we're living in this uh, reality that we all agree upon. That doesn't mean that it's really what it is. And I think that these things are a warp in the reality. I do. I I, I you know, I saw that thing when I was fifteen. I, it looked flesh and blood you know who knows i mean you know memory is what it is i know that my memory still i still have a pretty sharp memory i can repeat something to someone and they they're like yeah that's exactly how i told you so i'm not getting complaints from people saying i'm not telling their stories correctly S aside from like one or two people saying that you know maybe one or a word or here to their you know i try to memorize their accounts as best as possible but the thing that gets me is you when, when you listen to enough stories and enough people tell you stories and you get the same threads coming up over and over again, like that white creature, the the Wendigo or whatever it is, the rake, whatever you want to call it. The Wendigo. And then you get the creature like the Kidejo, you hear it over and over again, the red eyes, and you hear the Sasquatch stories, the same protruding brow and all that other. It's very similar that, you know, and you're thinking there is something to this because people from different parts of the entire country are coming up that, that never met each other that don't even not even into the paranormal or in any sense of the word and they'll tell you that this is what I saw and and you're going like there has to be something to this you know and like I wanted to to tell a quick story um you that was let me interject just real just real quick brother uh, that was actually going to be my correlation with the farmland because there was another Cadejo story down in La Jolla which is part of that whole Rio Grande Valley that whole hot hot spot right there uh where the cadejo was appearing in in crops mm -hmm. where people were citing this thing you know in the crops and i thought maybe that was a kind of a similar correlation with the cadejo in the taylor area that the folks that's all the time we have for this episode this continues it picks right up where we left off on the next episode and that'll be out next week <laughs>